Hey everybody, welcome to Faith Segment. Haven't done one in a while, been really busy. Um, just got back from the Living Your Dreams conference and it was a phenomenal retreat. It was so inspiring. There were so many strong, courageous women there that shared their testimonies, that, that just educated and inspired and motivated all of us. And we're gonna do it again next year and I hope we get three times as many women as we did this year. So I'm continuing my teaching on comparison. Clearly this is something that I st struggle with. I see a lot of women in the industry that struggle with this as well. I'm gonna keep this to the topic of health and wellness because that's the area that I'm most comfortable teaching on, but this is something that you can really take to any any place in, in in your own life but i see it the most in the industry that i work in women especially tend to size each other up they tend to compare themselves to other women whether it's people they know or people they see and one of the things i've noticed in this industry and i think it speaks volumes to what i was studying on is that for me you know a lot of people will not judge me based on my credentialing or my training, they determine if I have any value based on what I look like. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We're called to live out loud, you know, what we believe in. But if you don't have your identity founded in Christ and you don't, and you haven't overcome this trap of comparison, it can kind of shake you a little bit. It can kind of cause you to have self-doubt. So we're continuing our study and today we're going to talk on comparison is the thief of joy. And I can most definitely attest to that. Anytime I get myself in down a rabbit hole of comparison um, with other women, I am not joyful by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm, I'm grumpy and I'm, I'm I'm weak and I'm weary and I'm frustrated and I'm a lot of things, but I'm not joyful. So this is a culmination of a study that I did on the YouVersion Bible app, app from ActiveForthFaithSports.com. And it's also a culmination of one of the sermons that um, Pastor Seth did at our church. I took some of his notes and added to it as well. So the scripture we're going to kind of land on today is in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat at the throne of God. Now, there are a lot of references in the Bible to running. Okay, running a race, running with perseverance, running with determination. And I can tell you from experience that um, having done a first triathlon this year that it takes that it takes determination it takes perseverance you want to quit you want to stop you feel sick you feel tired your joints hurt your muscles hurt you want to quit and everything that i've found in the bible with references to that says don't and one of the reasons and it talks there's a lot of information going on in this scripture right here and one of them is we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses comparison just does just does just that people are watching you they're listening to you they're looking at you and in that realm we have the opportunity to point people to God and that's what it should be about you know so number one is run your own race one of the things that it says in the scripture of Hebrews is that you know the race is marked out for us meaning we all have our own individual race what mine looks like is going to be different than yours and so on so Find the race that you're called to run and run that race, okay? Run that race, partner with the Lord, recognizing that, you know, he set the standard. Let him be our measuring stick, not other people. Number two is going to be run to win. That's 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize, run in such a way as to get the prize? Now, I've, in my industry, I work with lots of different types of people and different um, walks of life and some people can run just for the purpose of running they can just do a light jog and be comfortable with that and that's fine but we are called as believers to run things with passion and fervor and dedication because what we're investing in is for an eternal value yes we have earthly investments yes we have things that we're going to benefit from now but ultimately the witness that we're presenting to the world is for one that goes from here to the Lord that okay so step three and four really go together this says trust God when you want to quit and train spiritually physically and it's Isaiah 4 30 40 31 1 Timothy 4 8 and 1 Corinthians 9 24 so Isaiah 40 31 I believe talks about uh, mounting up 
on wings like eagles and it talks about waiting on the Lord. And then the training, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last. And physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present and the life to come. Now, what I want to say about those two things is this. In our culture today, and I'm seeing it more and more and more, I don't know if it's because we have cell phones at our disposal, we can get something delivered the very next day, but we don't want to wait on anything. And we also want everything immediately. Like, we, we, we don't want to do the hard work. People do not want to invest the 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 time and the energy and the money and the sweat and the blood and the tears to grow and change and evolve and become better and to work out our strongholds and work through our weaknesses. People want a shortcut or they want to glaze over it. And there's, you know, the Bible strictly speaks against that. You know, we're called to trust on trusting God. We're called to wait on God. And we're also called to train and training is is unpleasant anybody who's prepared for anything whether it's it's a big presentation or it's a it's a race or whatever it is whether it's schooling it's unpleasant it's hard and one of the things that our my pastor said was lean into the discomfort you know don't run away from it just lean into it accept it embrace it say okay this is part of it and work through it and what happens is as soon as we get uncomfortable we quit no matter what it is, we quit. We don't want to deal with it. We don't want to face it. We don't want to humble ourselves. And the only way in order to grow spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally is to invest in this. Running with perseverance, waiting, trusting, training, doing the hard work. And lastly, we have to make our faith active. And by doing that, we put feet to it, right? And it, Which is all of the, the tools that we just talked about above that. We put... We make it real in our life. We live it out loud so that other people can see it and so that we can see it for ourselves. So I hope this has been helpful to you today. This is the uh, website down here, activefaithsports.com. I think they might even have some exercises that you can do on that website, although I didn't check it out because it was just connected to um, the YouVersion Bible app that I did. But look up the scriptures for yourself. Reread them from yourself after you've spent some time in prayer. God may show you something entirely different than he showed me. In fact, I, I know that he will. So I hope this is encouraging to you guys. Thanks for tuning in.